in the past we had disc jockeys to introduce us to new things and we had these very established channels. What are our first filters today? Well, the first, the first filters are the webs and the blogs, but they have to be trusted uh, people whose opinions you've come to respect over time because they, the music that they choose might not be right for your taste and might be right for somebody else's taste, but the great advantage is that you can sample some of the music without even buying it just to see whether it's something that fits for you. Even if you just get 30 seconds, well picked 30 seconds uh, from iTunes, uh, you get a sense of what the music is. And then you ask your, your friends are your best first filters. The people you collect records with, the people who you uh, uh, exchange files with. NPR is very, very special on new music. They, they have made a, uh, they have turned it into an, kind of an organized thing, but a very tight 10 people unit out of, 10 uh, person unit out of Washington, which does a very, very good job. And then you have people who have reputations who talk about music. You take a look at what a Jack White is doing. He's doing something very interesting. He's gone down to Nashville and he's recording what he wants. And you can only get it two ways, on vinyl or as a file. It doesn't come available on a CD. The first filters are very important because there's just too much stuff coming. And there's a lot of crap coming. The barriers to making records have fallen. Anybody can make a recording. But the question is, is it worth listening to? But over the years, we've learned to build albums very intelligently. The problem is that the people who know how to do that aren't doing it anymore. And people are just, whatever it is that is 30 or 40 minutes in length is an album. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's not the way to go about it. Albums are very tricky to make. And you have to have a very strong performer with a, a real sense of what it is they want to communicate and a sense of themselves for an album to be viable. I don't have to worry about singles. Singles will find their own viral path. They always do. It's because there's an excitement about a single. Historically, except for the period from, say, 1952 uh, up until maybe a few years ago, it was always, it was always singles. Uh, Albums really didn't exist because they were cumbersome 78 RPM breakable shellac record things. And so if you had a Beethoven symphony, you carried around five pounds under your arm. That was the beauty of the LP. What's the best way, now that MySpace is kind of waning and a lot of average people are using Facebook, which doesn't have a strong music component, mm -hmm. what's the best way for artists to reach people who want to hear their music? I have seen miracles happen. Uh, coming out of YouTube. I think YouTube is the strongest uh, the strongest place you can be. Look what happened with Susan Boyle. That went, that went viral overnight. Uh, one of my artists, Tom Rush, uh, did a song at, one, at some folk festival uh, called The Memory Song. I think that's what it's called. Four million plays. And I don't know how many of those played the entire song because that's that stuff that is not made known, not made known to us. But if it's good and it's on YouTube, it has a really good shot. The people who took early advantage of video were able to control the image that their artist was going to present to the public. So video has had an enormous role. Well, having been the person at the nexus point of of, of this, I did the first, uh, pro one of the first uh, videos meant for television uh, back in 1966 when I wanted to, didn't want to send the doors out on the road, but I wanted to send the signal out, a uh, single out on the road, break on through, because it was a great tune for, uh, for uh, dance band shows. Uh, so we did that, and then a friend of mine, Michael Nesmith of the Monkees, had done a wonderfully expressive video uh, called Rio. And I introduced him to the person who ran our Nickelodeon uh, channel. And we did a, did a program called Pop Clips, which then became MTV. Today, I think it's different. I think you can see a lot of original, originality. You can learn more about an artist through the video, how they go about it what they're trying to say, they're, you get into their head better. 
you get to know them better. You have a richer feeling with the artist if you have the visual component. Uh, I, I'm not sure the companies that say they'll promote your video for you uh, on the web do the job. They have a whole bunch of things that they do, but if, if that stuff gets filtered out. And people can tell when, it, when they're being sold something. You are tested by every email you get and every pitch you get. You know what, the, you, begin to, you begin to figure out right away what's real and what's not real. And I think people are very intelligent about that. You can't fool people anymore. People are looking for something that's fresh, that's honest, that's interesting, and that adds to their lives.